it's Michelle from CNC Designs. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in New Zealand and today I'm going to show you how to make this lovely um, lantern using uh, some of the current products um, from Stampin' Up! and so this lantern hopefully you can see it there it's in the petal pink colors and has some images from the Power of Hope. This one here um, I had a little light um, I got from the Lantern Festival a few years ago. So it lights up from the top and shines like that. Now seeing that uh, most people probably can't get the same type of little light, I have no idea where to get it, um, I'm going to show you today's project using just a simple um, tea light, uh, uh, battery operated tea light. Most people can get these at the dollar shops. I know here in New Zealand we can get them at our dollar shops. Um, so I will show the same project, but I will show um, how to do it with a tea light in the bottom. Hopefully it will work um, as planned. And so let's get started. I'll just leave that there so you can have a bit of a look at it. Okay. So the stamps I'm using for this are the Power of Hope stamps. Um, you can use any other um, stamps you want on the vellum. This is one of the um, free items you get during celebration and there's only a few weeks left. Ce celebration ends um, on March 31st. This is a second level um, gift you can get for free. It comes with a um, embossing folder as well. But I love the stamps. They're Asian theme and I think they go really well with um, my little lantern there. So we're using um, four stamps on this. Depending on how large you make your lantern, you can use more stamps. Uh, other items I'm using are the tassels. They come from the Best Dress Tassel Set. Um, you get 18 tassels in three different colors in that set. If you're doing something with um, a color that's not here, um, this is a petal pink, um, the peacock, and a whisper white. Um, you can actually ink up the whisper white um, with our reinkers to give you a different color. So you just dip it in the reinkers and leave it out to dry. You could probably even um, drag it across some of the ink pads if you want to um, give it a different color or a different shade. Uh, I'm also using some petal pink vellum. Now this actually has an image on it. This was um, is retired from last year, but we do have other um, vellum that's available um, in uh, the pink as well as other colors. Um, or you could even use your blends pens, which are the um, alcohol based, to give it a plain vellum, a little color sheen on one side of it and leave it to dry. Uh, it won't work with our stamp and write pens because they're water based, but it will work with any alcohol based. Um, this piece here is measured at uh, five inches by four inches. I will put all the uh, measurements in my blog post and the products used at the bottom of this YouTube video. Um, and then this is scored at half an inch on either side. This is the short side, so you score half an inch down either side of this. Um, I will put the metric measurements also in the blog post. You will also need um, a matching color, um, in this case it's the petal pink, of um, half an inch to cover those areas and a bit longer than the width. So it's got to be um, five inches or longer. In this case I just used a bit of scrap that's longer. And then you'll want one I cut at a quarter inch and that's about six inches long. That will be used for the handle at the top. With um, some vellum and other card, um, matching cardstock, I cut out using the seasonal layer thinlets. They have some really pretty um, little floral ones that look like um, blossoms, cherry blossoms. So there's three of those, and the those are the sizes, and I cut them out in the um, petal pink cardstock as well as the vellum. Originally I did this with just the vellum but they did the vellum didn't show up very well so what I do is I layer them over the matching piece of the cardstock and it makes it stand out better. You could even contrast different colors if you want. Um, I Originally I also tried sponging 
some of the cardstock, so you can see there's a bit of sponging on there, but it just didn't stand out as well. So I've decided just to go with the vellum on top of the cardstock there. Um, and I also mentioned you need a tea light. Uh, I've got pearls. So I'm going to use white pearls on there. Um, my original one, I had some leftover um, pink pearls that were available last year. You could color your pearls with your Stampin' Blends. I've shown that in other videos. So if there's a specific color you want, color the pearls in and use your um, Stampin' Blends to do that. And I've got some of the gold thread. That is to um, attach the um, tassel at the bottom and on this attempt that will hopefully um, hold the tea light so the tea light can be at the bottom and not fall through. So let's get started and see how we get on. So the first thing you need to do is you need to stamp your vellum. Now I've already um, arranged where I want my stamps to be so I've put three of them on one block and the other on another block. You could stamp this in stays on if you want um, to make sure it doesn't um, come off. But I did mine in Memento, um, the Tuxedo Black ink, and it worked just fine. Uh, just leave it to dry for a moment or two. So, and because this is a linen ink pad, you can give it a bit more pressure than our colored ink pads. Uh, the colored ones, if you put too much pressure, it goes, gets all over the edges. I always turn my ink, my stamp, over just to check in the light that it's fully inked especially when it's red rubber and another thing you might want to do is to fold your um, score lines burnish them and you don't really need to use a bone folder for this because they're that thin that way you've got a better idea of where you're going to stamp the other, th um, other thing I wanted to mention is when you score it, you actually put, um, when you put pressure on there to score the line, you're actually creating what's called a valley. And when you um, fold it and burnish it, you should go the opposite way. So a lot of people think when you do the valley, you fold towards yourself. Um, but that's actually not um, putting pressure in the right place on your cardstock or your vellum. So the valley, which is um, pressed in, you want to fold against it, which turns the valley into what we call a mountain. Um, that's uh, standard origami phrases, um, and that's kind of helpful to remember um, which way to fold it. Okay? So having done that, I now know that I'm actually going to want to stamp on this side because the way it's going to sit. So I'll just ink that up again. Just make sure I've got good ink on there. And I'll put this close to the edge. You don't want it close to the edge on both sides because one side will be overlapping. And just give it good pressure without wobbling it. Just straight down. Nice, good pressure if you've got something that um, might not take the ink very well. If this was just normal cardstock, I'd just go down and up because um, it will suck up the ink. Okay? So it's not a very dark image, but I like the um, way it goes because with the vellum, I want it to be rather light. And then ink up the rest. Some people, when you have a big thing to ink, it's easier to just go with the ink pad on it this way. You also then don't need to turn it over to see if everything's in the right place. And hopefully I line my words up. They might be crooked, but that's okay. It's handmade. That's what you get. Nobody's perfect. Okay, just checking that it looks like it's all inked up. And so this one... I want it to be slightly over. And I don't want it to be right at that edge because the edge will overlap. And you'll see that in a minute. So plenty of pressure. Ink it up nicely. My original one I did a bit wider um, because I had the different light in there and I actually hadn't thought about putting light in it when I originally made it. I was going to just set it over a tea light. Um, this one I've made 
a bit smaller. So there you go. There's the words. Not quite as dark as my original impression. Um, I may have used stays on for the original one. I'm not sure. Okay. So I'm going to leave that to dry for a moment. So I'll just clean my um, stamps while it dries. And I'll be right back. Okay, so while that's having a few minutes to dry, um, I just wanted to show you what I meant about coloring your um, pearls. So this is Petal Pink. If you're going to color the pearls, I suggest you go with the dark um, pen. So that's the dark Petal Pink because the light ones don't show up very well. The, the uh, ones I used before were just simply some pink ones I happen to have. Now this isn't going to end up being very dark, but it'll just get it a, give it a nice little sheen um, onto the pearls and make them not quite so bright. I've got uh, six flowers I'm going to put on this design, so I'm going to color in six of these, so just right around. Best to color them on the paper and leave them to dry for a few minutes. I've got a bit of hair on there. That's what happens when you live with a cat. Okay, so they're not really dark, but they just give it a little bit of a hint of color. Just around the edge. Okay, so let's see if you can see in there. So, so those are just not as bright as the white ones. So I'll leave those to dry for a bit. And we'll come in and get our flowers prepared. Now the reason I'm leaving this to dry for a while is we actually need to cut the strips to make it work. So I want it to have sufficient time to dry. So with the flowers, you just simply match up the other ones. A little bit of glue. doesn't matter that um, it's vellum. Glue does show through on vellum. Um, but it doesn't matter that much um, because of the pattern on this. So just putting a bit of glue and giving it a good rub in. The glue also gives you a bit of wiggle room so you can figure out. Um, trying to line up um, the actual image. And there we go. So as you can see that just makes that flower stand out more than that flower. Uh, you can see the differences on the two flowers. So one is almost see-through and the other one just gives you a nice little subtle pattern and then you can manipulate it if you want to you know, give it a bit of shape, scrunch it up so when you stick it down it's not just plain and flat. Okay. Um, I suggest you put the pearls on last because um, when you try to attach these um, it might have difficulty. Um, you might knock the pearl off while you're trying to attach these so it's better to just attach the pearl last. So just lining those up. So normally I wouldn't use um, liquid glue with vellum because you can usually see it through but because of the pattern on this it's not that noticeable. And I'll just finish off the rest of them and I'll be right back. Okay, so that's my flowers all stuck together. So they give it a bit of depth and um, structure to the vellum. Um, and so the next thing is to, now that the ink is dried, is to cut through um, our lantern. And I just press it down on the paper a bit just to make sure all the ink's dried and nothing's going to smear. Yep, looks fairly dry. Get more just to... Now you might think, why don't I just use the heat gun to dry it, but heat and vellum do not go together very well. It would curl the vellum and distort it and even possibly burn it. So, now, um, we've got to cut the strips to make our lantern. So then the lantern will, um, you can have it straight or push it to make it more puffy, like a traditional lantern. Um, so we're going to, doesn't stand well because of the tassel. So we're going to cut this 
um, and in order to cut it, um, I, I cut it into strips of a uh, one quarter inch, which is approximately um, quarter inch is about uh, half a uh, centimeter. Now, with the new um, trimmer, the marks on it are actually right at a quarter inch, so um, it makes it perfect for cutting this. Okay, you don't want to cut all the way up, so you want to start half half an inch down. So that was a half an inch scored there at the top and the bottom. So you want to um, trim it between that. So there are little marks on the bar of the um, trimmer. Don't know if you can quite see. There we go. So there are little marks here. Um, to make it easier, you can take a bit of washi tape and place it where you want to start and where you want to stop. Um, so I'm simply going to put washi tape right at the top part of the half inch. So that's my half inch there. And then, so I want to start half inch down and then I only want to go to three and a half inches because this is four inches but we're taking a half inch off um, both ends. So I want it to go to three and a half so I'm going to mark my washi tape where the three and a half is. Um, I can see it but I'm doing this more for um, you so you can see where I'm cutting between. So you might be able to see there's numbers on there. So I marked half inch and I marked three and a half inch. So I'm only cutting my strip between those two bits. You could, um, if you have a, um, a blade, you could do it with the blade. Um, but this is quite convenient because I want a quarter inch strip so I can line it up perfectly with the um, lines there. See how I've lined that up with the first line and then I'll move it over a line and over a line and over a line, okay? Or I can do it the other way around. So start it at five and then on this side over here I'm gonna go one line and one line and one line. Okay? So I will trim this. I'll show you the first few trimmings and then I will carry on and do it. Okay, so you want to move it up and there's actually a line I might not have shown you if you're not familiar with it. There's actually a cutting line. See that line there? It's on either side and there's one in the middle so you know exactly where the blade's going to be. So if I don't press it down until I have that line lined up with my um, washi tape, give it pressure until I have it lined up with the second piece of washi tape and stop, then I'm only cutting between those two lines. All right. Hopefully that wasn't too much information or too complicated for you. So we'll start it at that side there. Okay, and press and slide it until the line comes to that piece of washi tape. And there we go, that's the first cut. One quarter inch between both score lines. And so then I just keep moving it of course, I'm going to run out this side, so I'll actually line up on that side to see where I'm cutting it, okay? And so you can leave it where you end it, and then now we can just go up. Press and slide it up. And lift. So there's our first two trims, okay? So I'm going to pause the video and finish cutting these. Um, I would just speed the video up, but I'm not that... Uh, clever at this stage, so instead of you watching me cut everything, I'm simply going to pause it and I'll be back when it's finished cutting. Okay, I'm not quite finished, but while I was cutting this, I realized something that's even simpler than the washi tape. Now, the washi tape would be good if you were doing um, regular cardstock, but because I um, folded and burnished um, where those fold lines are, you can see there's a white line. So when I'm cutting, I simply have to match that line up with the white line and slide it up to I get to the next white line. So I don't actually need to look at the washi tape. I can simply look this way to the left 
and slide it. That's great with the vellum because when you um, uh, burnish vellum, it turns white on the lines. Um, other cardstock, the washi tape method would be better because then you know exactly where and you don't have to worry about going too far. Okay, I'll finish cutting this now. Okay, so I've finished cutting that. I can put my trimmer out of the way. And as you can see, I've cut a quarter inch slivers throughout everything between those two. So when it curves around, you can actually get that shape. Now I need to attach the two sides together. Um, and the best way to attach vellum to itself, um, you could do the glue, but uh, it's actually much easier just to use um, a bit of double-sided tape uh, to line it up. So I'm going to go ahead and um, try that. And our tape turns out it's actually a quarter inch wide. So you want the top and the bottom connected all the way around. And um, well, having said that, I might actually use the glue because I want to have some wiggle room on this. So you see I didn't um, stamp all the way, so you want the glue to go on the part that hasn't been stamped on, on the side that's not stamped. And go ahead and go all the way from the top to the bottom, just a little sliver of a glue. And this is not really going to be seen because it's going to overlap. So you want to overlap the, just that what last little sliver with your first sliver. So you don't want to squish it, so it's best to try to do this in the air. There we go. I'm trying to keep those score lines lined up. Once you have that, then you can just gently go over with your fingers, manipulate the part in the center. So it just gives a bit of reinforcement. So you see, you can kind of see where the glue seeps out. You can see it on the vellum, but it's not going to be that noticeable. And then that's going to hold it in place. All right. Now, this is where it gets slightly tricky. Um, and why you watch me do it instead of trying it on your own because I get to play around. Okay, so the um, gold thread is going to be at the bottom um, in this case hopefully to hold hopefully we haven't done it too far so that's going to hold the tea light in place because we could just have it on the table and have the tea light there but if you want it to hang I thought you know with the tassel we're going to try something different um, and what I propose is this time we are going to use a little double-sided tape. So we'll just put a little in a opposite spots on the inside. So tear and tape is great because you can just tear it in place. So opposite sides. I'll just tear a bit off first. So good, it's sticking to my finger. So try to put it on opposite sides because we want to have uh, go across four times. It doesn't have to be exact because this inside is going to be hidden away. Actually, now that I think about it, I told you wrong. Not on the that side. We want it on the outside. Because we're going to put our cardstock to cover that part. And the good thing with using um, double sided tape, it does peel off the vellum fairly easily. Okay, so I'll take this off. And I shall be back in a moment. Okay, so it's a case of do as I say, not do as I do. So put it opposite size outside. Definitely want it to go over the seam because you want that to be hidden. And so basically you need four little opposite areas. Roughly. And this is just going to hold the thread in place until we cover it up with our cardstock. So it's not that crucial where you put the double-sided tape. Okay. So 
the thread. Um, I haven't cut it off because I'm not quite sure how long of a length I need to use. Um, so I'm just going to choose one of these sides to take the sticky off. And I'm just putting the thread through, manipulating it through, and I'm just going to wrap it around a few times because I don't want it to fall apart. So just let it go over. And this is just to secure the end of the thread. And I just don't, because the tassel's hanging at the bottom, and actually on this one I'm going to have the um, tea light uh, supported by the thread, I just want to make sure that it's sufficiently um, wrapped around and is not going to come loose. So I've wrapped it around, oh, stuck my finger in there, wrapped it around a couple times, and then you come back through and then go opposite and we don't want to um, shrink the size of our um, hole there so when we come opposite I'm just going to cut a bit off so I'll have an end now to wrap around okay so I'll just cut a bit off there so I can wrap that around so pull your bit off there just setting that over there to kind of keep it in place and so I know what size. So this is a bit of a trial and error for me as far as um, doing the tea light going to be in the bottom. And if you hadn't noticed, this is the bottom of my lantern. So I'm just trying to stick that there. Just make sure that's the right size for the tea light. Yep, that looks good. And now that it's stuck, I'm just going to grab that thread through there. Yes, I know it looks fiddly. Yep. And it unstuck itself. Believe me, it actually is method to my madness. Just check, is that still the right? Yep, it's still the right size. So get it on the tape again. And to go on the tape. There we go. And wrap it around again. Okay, so the idea is that you'll be able to pop your tea light in and see how the tea light's being held by the thread. Okay, so that's the plan. That is what I'm attempting. Um, and I just realized something very crucial. I forgot to put my tassel on. My goodness, I'm not having a very good time of it. So. Before you adhere the second side, I knew there was something I was supposed to do. You attach your tassel. This is also why we do this with tape because we would be able to take things apart easily. So you want your tassel to go on. And you might think, well, you've got one more thread to do, but if I put it through each thread, then that secures it nice um, and firmly in the center. So once you get your tassel on the one side, we'll go back and stick this through again, making sure that we've got, not making it too small, that's good. And send the thread through and attach it. Okay, so I will do the other thread and I will come back and show you the end result because you don't need to see me fiddling around with this. Okay, be right back. Okay, so having fiddled around with it for a bit, as you can see, I've now um, put the cord 
both cords through um, the tassel. Okay, and they're wrapped around there, which you won't see in a moment when I cover that up. And now, if I pop my tea light in the top, I can slide it, whoop, slide it down into the middle like that. And so that holds the tea light in place at the bottom. And then I can actually turn my tea light on. And that is what I was attempting to do. Okay. So I can turn that off. And it doesn't matter whether the tea light's in there or not. So next step, cover up everything. Um, the easiest way to do that is with the double-sided tape because it's just a narrow strip. So just double-sided tape. Now I've got the tea light in there. That's actually quite helpful because it's letting me hold it nice and stiff. Okay, so run your double-sided tape around the edge there. Come back to the beginning and tear it off. Good old tearing tape. Okay, tearing right on to me. And then you don't want to take the whole thing off in one go because you want to be able to overlap it. So peel off one end of it. And then start assembling your cardstock. The cardstock is just going to give it stability as well as cover up all that um, cord that we put down there. So holding the tea light in place actually makes this quite easy to do. Just pull a little tear and tape off as you curve it around. So if you didn't want to put the tassel on the bottom, or didn't have the tassel, you could simply just set this over the tea light, and you wouldn't need um, that little bit of um, uh, thread at the bottom, because you wouldn't have a tassel there. So now that we came to the overlapping part, I'm going to take my scissors and just snip off where it overlaps. It doesn't have to be totally accurate because what's going to happen is we're going to put a flower there to cover it up. So I'm just going to look there and snip. And then put that into place. Okay. Ta -da. So that's the bottom. Nice and sturdy now. I'll just get rid of the sticky. And now, your handle on. So, because it's cardstock, you could have ribbon up there holding the top. You want to just use your bone folder and gently um, stretch, just gently let it curve, okay? That just helps um, bend the fibers and it won't snap and break so easily. Now, my original one, the reason I actually have a flower at the top is because I... Uh, stuck two pieces together instead of cutting, see that's the join there, instead of cutting um, one I just use what I had left over and that's why I have a flower on the top. Um, so I don't know whether I'll do the flower for this one or not. Okay, so just a bit of uh, double-sided tape on the areas that you want it to stick. So again, I'm just doing it to um, cover up the seam. So I've got one here over the seam. And then the other piece I'm going to put opposite, roughly. And that's just going to hold it in place. You could use your liquid glue again um, for this part of it just to hold your um, handle in place and your handle I did um, six inches long but it's up to you how long you want your handle to be also um, keep in mind when you do your handle um, you want to have you're going to lose a bit when you overlap 
it onto the sides. So roughly opposite sides. If you want, you could even line it up perfectly with the same, you know, cut that you've got there. Um, and don't worry if you haven't put your tea light in because there'll be plenty of room to slide it and pop it in later on. In fact, I might pull it up there because I'll use it to um, help attach the piece at the top like I did at the bottom because that seems to be quite a handy thing to do. So now that you got your um, handle on, you could even you know go so far as to stamp on it if you want it. Um, and I'm going to just put my double-sided tape around the edge and come back to where it started tear it off okay get that nice and rubbed in so it'll come off easily so now I'm gonna pop my tea light just there to give me stability for sticking my cardstock on All right, so peel off a bit of that. Okay, you don't want to peel it all off. Sorry, I was getting my cards off. Just enough to get you started. And I'm just going to have the seam there because I'm going to put a flower on the edge um, where the join is. So if I put the join there it makes it more convenient so it is much easier to do this with a tea light in there so I'm putting holding the tea light to give me pressure my original one I don't know if you've noticed is actually quite large the circle so that wasn't really made for a tea light to be floating inside it okay now you could break up the fibers like I did before with the bone folder um, for this part of it, but I want it to be nice and stiff, so I didn't want it to be too loose, so I didn't do that. Okay, now that I've overlapped it, pop that out, and now come back in, try to trim that as close to the edge as possible. Maybe a bit more, a little more. There we go. Now you're thinking, probably, why didn't she just measure it up the first, but when you overlap, you might have your numbers off, and you'd rather have it tight like that than um, a gap showing up. Okay, so now this is time to decorate it. So basically, there's our lantern. And you can play with it a bit to give it some give, etc. But now we can decorate it with our flowers. And as I said, there's three different types of flowers. Those two, those two, and those two. So, on my original one, I put the big ones up at the top. And because it's got cardstock going on cardstock, liquid glue is fine. You could use um, a, um, a glue dot if you want. Um, but I want it to be a bit more secure, so I'm not going to do that. I'll just use a bit of glue. So just pop a bit of glue on the bottom there if the Tombow decides to cooperate. That's why I usually store my bottles upside down so the glue will come out. There we go. Just watch out when you bang it like that. Sometimes it comes out too quickly. Okay. So I know I, the strip's not that big, so I don't need it all the way up to the edges. And then pop that in place however you'd like. And give it a hold for a few seconds. Get it to stick in place. Yeah. Originally, I made this thinking of the Lantern Festival that they have every February here in Auckland, New Zealand, but unfortunately it got cancelled this year because of the coronavirus going around. And you've probably got events where you are that have been cancelled and changed and things, 
Um, so I thought I'll spend more time just doing videos and showing people how to make things. Because if you're going to be stuck at home, it's good to craft. It helps to relax you, release stress, and um, pastime. And honestly, I'm getting a bit tired of every time I turn the TV on, they're talking about more and more about coronavirus. So I'm trying to stay away from watching TV, um, proper TV, you know, live TV. I have my news a couple times a day, but the rest of it, okay, so that's there. So that's hiding the scene. You can't see the scene right there, okay? And then um, the bottom, um, I uh, chose to put three. I don't know why I chose to put three. Oh, because I used one at the top. But um, you can just put them anywhere. Again, you want to cover up the seam, so I'll go with um, the bigger one that would probably be best to cover the seam. And then I'll decide what I want to do with the others. But um, I quite like the dies for these flowers. It, they match up with the Colorful Seasons stamp set. If you haven't already seen that, that's in the main catalog. It's lovely because you have all four seasons of the year. Um, you have the lovely uh, like look like poppies that attach perfectly onto um, one of these branches in the snow and the summer. And, and you can mix and match them however you like. Um, I use this quite a lot. I've had it for a long time. Um, and it's photopolymer so they all line up. I did a video um, a while ago showing um, the numbers in here that show which flower and how to line things up. So if you want to see this set in use, um, have a look at my videos. Um, I think it was a did you know video um, showing how the numbers are on there and how you use them to line things up. Okay, so I think I will go ahead and do um, three flowers at the bottom. Might put one there just to be a bit different. Oh, put it on the flower is the better idea. So you can decorate it however you want. You could even, um, there's some really nice stamp sets that could have stamped at the bottom there. Um, another uh, celebration stamp set that has an interesting um, design. I think it's called the Thoughtful Blooms. And it has an interesting little design that I could have stamped um, on that bottom part, it would have gone quite nicely. And then I think I will go with another one of these. Should I just stick with the two? Yeah. Actually, I'm thinking I might do four at the top and just the two at the bottom. Um, This one I can just might do that a bit more decoration at the top. And that's the thing with the flowers. I don't have to use all of them, but because I don't need the one um, on the handle to hide my join. Oh, I gotta hold it. My fingers are getting sticky, so <laughs> take them away and it pulls the item off instead of leaving it there. And lucky last flower. And there we go. And now I'm going to put some pearls on. And you could even um, sponge around the edges of the um, cardstock if you wanted to. Now that's done. Let me find where did I put? There's my colored pearls, and use my little pick pick tool. Now they got little sticky on the bottom, so just subtle. It's not that um, dark, but it isn't as bright as putting a white pearl on there. So. Just pop the pearls in the center. Just gives you a little splash of color. Yep. 
adds a bit of interest to it. You could even, you know, use your blends and just um, pop a little. Um, thought I heard one move. Just pop a little color in the center of them. But you can see if I went with white. That's the white one, so that one is okay, but I think it just jumps out a bit too much. So I'm going to go with the colored ones. Okay, I love that they're already sticky on the back because then you don't have to fiddle around with trying to stick things on. Oop. And another pearl. I love the blossoms, they're so pretty. Even though it's now autumn here in New Zealand and the cold snap has finally started. We're still not getting a lot of rain. And unfortunately, living rurally, I need rain for my water tank. Okay, so am I going to call that done? Let's see. Is there anything else I was needing to do? I don't think so. Ooh, I think that one can be called done. Okay, so there you go. So you got your image going around. There's my original one. The image is a bit darker. Um, and then this one was actually an afterthought because um, doing the cord and that little light um, and so I had to put a wire in there to hold that light in place because um, that's the nature of that light bulb. And I just noticed one of my pearls fell off. i to put that back before. I... So see this pearl is actually pink. It was a set of pearls that um, was available last year. I'm not sure which color that one was, but you can see the difference between the pink pearl and the one that I colored in the um, petal pink. So now let's see how this works. Pop that in. I can hold it, hold the top of the tea light, squish it down, get it down there at the bottom, and then Holding that and turn it on. Oh, sorry, I should show you turning it on. So once it's down in there, didn't push it far enough. Okay, so once it's down in the bottom, probably it's a good idea actually that I didn't put too many flowers there because I can hold the sides of it. Then simply turn it on, and there you've got your tea light. And it's kind of hard to show it. Um, Hard to show it hanging when the camera is sitting that way. So there's your light there, and then whoop, there's your tea light there. So there's that one, and then this is the one that I had. The other one that you actually have to pull it to make that one go on. And so when you lie that one down, it sits that way. So there's the two different ones. Two different lanterns with different tea lights that you can make um, using any um, stamp set to decorate your vellum. Um, however, I use the Power of Hope stamp set. So if you enjoyed that, please um, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my videos. Um, if you have any comments, um, please leave them on the video. If you want to see something else, let me know. I'm quite happy to make more things for everybody to see. Um, have a look at my papercraft addiction blog spot.co.nz um, for the uh, I'll be putting a blog on with the actual um, dimensions of everything and this video below this video I will have all the products that I use listed but keep in mind this power of hope is a free celebration item and celebration finishes on the 31st of March. If you live in New Zealand and would like to buy any Stampin' Up! products and do not already have a demonstrator, I would love to be yours. So give me um, an email or a call or go have a look at my uh, website. Um, and if you um, don't live in New Zealand uh, and you don't have a demonstrator, check out stampingup.com and you can be able to find a demonstrator near you. Otherwise, contact your demonstrator if you want to get any of these items. And thanks so much. Have a lovely day.
Bye.